Hello, and welcome back to Colonize. This is the completed build of Materialism, which is build three. Uh, it's running the full version, and uh, there's been plenty of changes since build two. So if you haven't been here since build two, we'll be going through as many of the changes as we can. The patch notes are fairly long, as we can see. We've added quite a few things into the game. We've changed a few things, and we've fixed a few bugs. So. Uh, in terms of size and scope, it's about twice the size of work work. Um, so there's a lot of new features. You may notice that the main menu scene looks a little bit different. So we have a lot more decorations and we have some new structures here that we've added to the game um, and stuff like that. We've changed the help screen to include data and help tips or tips that are relevant to the new build. Um, there is a new option screen so you can change your volume. Um, and I'm just going to turn down volume a little bit here. So you can change screen resolution, full screen, and your graphics quality. It's all there. Uh, we have a load game button which now handles multiple saves. Uh, we only see one right now, which is a previous save. Um, but the whole save and loading system has gone through a pass. And now instead of saving like 50 files for one save, each save is its own single file. So it's much more compact and it's easier for us to handle multiple saves now. Um, they're all still JSON data, so you can still work with it in terms of if you wanted to mod the save. It's really easy. So yeah, that's all. it's all there. Um, so let's just go ahead and start a new game. And hopefully we'll start seeing some new things pop up immediately. So first things first, um, immediately... We generate a lot more decorations in the world. It's, I think it's about 90 times the decorations we generated before. Um, and the decorations have their own colors now and stuff like that. And um, we also have kind of changed the border decorations for like a kind of a similar set of looking rocks, but a bit more dense at the sides. So these are the edges and things like that. Other things you may notice uh, we've uh, applied some small post processing to the game. So it looks a bit better now in my opinion it, it kind of loses that standard unity look in terms of lighting um just just a small bit of post-processing and of course the ui has gone through a pass um it still needs another pass but right now we're pretty happy with it we've tried to remove text where we can and insert icons so we have food water and air uh, and population we have two new uh, materials stone and plastics uh, and we have a colony named thing so what this colony name is actually used for in game is for your save name so i'm just going to call this full build vid and i just hit enter and that's saved supply drops and population drops work exactly as they did before um, and this is a living dome and as you can see it's gone for a model pass it's very basic it's actually the first thing i ever modeled by myself so it's it's a bit basic but uh, i believe another pass will kind of fix a lot of the issues with it but it actually looks like a dome now which is instead of the house it used to be so i'm pretty happy with that um so i need build menus like this so we split it up into categories based on the category of building so we have living space food air water energy miscellaneous and home interests so here you can see there's a living dome our food has the hydroponics which has also had a model pass moxie also had a model pass um waiver which is a model pass i actually really like this model that i did for this it's pretty cool um and we see when we kind of go to build something we get its its costs so we can see that a waiver costs 15 stone and 15 plastics to build um, and in certain circumstances, like the spaceport here, all these buildings require populations. So we have the working populations from the last build. So we can see here that a spaceport requires two working populations to be active. Um, and the spaceport's gone through a model pass as well. Uh, we've got all new energy. So energy is a new thing in the game. Um, buildings now require energy to run. Living domes, basically, Will produce just about enough for themselves and another structure um, just to kind of get you started and off the ground um, so they should always if you were to somehow get to a point where you would generate you were using so much more energy than you were generating the living dome should in theory keep themselves active 
Um, so we have solar panels to wind turbines and we have the battery. So the battery stores energy, the wind turbine and solar panels generate energy. Um, and I'll put a turbine in and you can see it animates. Kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place a battery down. So you may be hearing new, new kind of UI sounds as well for certain things. Um, We've uh, gone through and tried to add more sounds in general. Um, I believe the battery, if we get close enough, makes a sound now. And if we move away, we hear it less and less and less. So it's a cool 3D audio stuff there, just to kind of give you a feel of where you are. Uh, as we saw when we built the battery, we unlocked a new button, the energy UI. So this gives us information on our entire energy network. We see how much EU we're generating, so EU is energy units per tick. Um, and we tell the player that energy tick was occur every five seconds. So we just check your energy levels every five seconds. Um, and we can see how much we generate, we can see how much is required, and we can see how much we're storing. If we're not generating enough for the requirement, then we'll start using storage. And when the storage runs out, and when we generate, if the requirement is still up of generation, then we'll start to see blackouts where buildings start getting deactivated um, and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, pretty happy with that, and we added some new sounds for activating and deactivating. Sounds a bit more, uh, it's a bit more imposing, should we say. Um, we have gone through a pass of the colony hall, which is in the miscellaneous. We also have the new warehouses, which are upgradable structures. Um, so if I go ahead and place the colony hall, we can see our colony buttons here. Um, this whole UI has gone through a pass, so we don't want to compact, we'll try to use icons where we can. Um, but generally we try to give the player as much information as possible. Um, so here we can see that we're gaining water, but we're losing air and food per tick, so we should build those structures. We can also see that we're, we're not getting any stone or plastic. So um, to get stone and plastic into the world, uh, we can go ahead and do our home interests. And build the Zeno mine. What the Zeno mine did, does now is it generates a little bit of stone, a little bit of plastic, but it also will unlock the 3D printer and the masonry. Wrong button. Uh, so if I go to miscellaneous no, home address, there it is. So now we have two new buildings here the base the masonry and the 3D printer station. So the masonry generates stone and the 3D printer will generate plastics. Um, and we should be able to see in our colony info that we're now generating stone and plastic. It's a very small amount on the Zeno miner. Um, I believe it's 10 of each per, like, um, he says, basic, basic masonry and our 3D printer station. Uh, I apologize, I am suffering for a little bit of a cold and things are a bit muddled in my head. Um, so we're doing all right. Uh, let's go ahead and call supply drops and population drops and stuff like that. Uh, your hydroponics model, it's all clear. I need to actually fill it up with something that looks like it's hydroponics inside. It's all right. Um, tick hasn't occurred yet, so it hasn't updated. What else have we got? Um, so we've gone through the new generators. So in terms of resources now, we've split them up into two categories. So we have construction resources, which is stone and plastics. They're only used to construct buildings. That's it. That's that's all they use for. Food, air, and water that was used before for construction is now just used for maintenance costs. So it's it's just for maintaining your colony. And you'll see that each structure now has its own maintenance cost. Um, so here the colony hall has two of each. Zeno minus two of each. Hydroponics generates food, whereas it costs other resources. You know, so it's kind of the same kind of gameplay as before in terms of food, air, and water. But now it's not affecting your ability to construct your buildings. Um, can we build a warehouse? We can. So a basic warehouse um, increases your maximum storage. That's the thing I didn't mention. So now we have stockpiles, right? And these are resources. You see, we have maximum values of these resources. When the tick kind of occurs, we should see the stockpile increase. Um, and what the warehouses do is just increase your maximum value. This is just to stop players from infinitely generating. So as you see here, the stop bars have gone up by 100. So you're just you're not going to be infinitely generating a certain resource 
once you hit 350 water that's it it's just going to stay at 350 you know so it's just kind of a, a way to kind of if you want to go for a big kind of colony like a longer game colony then you're going to need to build warehouses and this also has a new button on it the upgrade button now i don't think we can afford it right now no we require a bit more stone uh oh. Um, but we can see here the basic warehouse is 100 max supplies. Um, I believe if we generate another piece of stone or two, we'll be able to upgrade that in the future. But basically, it just deletes this building and replaces it on top with a newer one, which is bigger, provides more resources or maximum supplies. And it's just it's just us getting to the point where we can upgrade structures. Oh, hello. Oh, we're running out of air. Okay, cool. So before we kind of do anything, do pause menu. Um, so we can go back to the game twice. I'm not sure why it's twice. That's a bug. Um, we can save and continue, save and exit, and exit to main menu. So let's exit without saving. Um, I believe the second back to game is actually options menu. <laughs> That's a bug. Um, so this is the in-game options menu. It's exactly the same as the main menu one. You can just change your settings here. That's options. <laughs> I just need to change the text. Um, let's save and exit. So just to prove that we handle multiple um, loads, full video is what we just played. Um, as you can see, everything's still here. Uh, stats are what they were. If I exit main menu, hopefully my other game should load. Full build. Here's my other game I was playing earlier. I was just testing some stuff. And as you can see, all the data is loaded. And you can see all the decorations have kept there the data and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's where we're at with colonized. I don't believe we've missed anything. We've gone through, I'm just checking the build notes, construction materials, unlockable buildings, 3D printer, masonry, maximum supply caps, warehouses, upgradable buildings, medium warehouses, colony naming, multiple save files, the load game screen, load new decorations has been added, post-processing, the whole energy system and the buildings attached to it. The UI for the energy, the new options menu, um, new sound effects we've added, and new UI sounds. In terms of changes, pretty much every piece of UI has gone through a visual pass. Um, resource bar has gone through a pass. Uh, building structures no longer cost food, air, and water, so it uses construction materials. Uh, buh, buh, buh. save handling changes so yeah i saving so our save files are a, a, of a type called sgjson it's just so we can easily identify our save files they are just json files we just save it as the type sgjson just so i can find those types specifically um and they're just freaking json files so if you open up in a json file editor of your choice it should show up correctly um New game world generation. So yeah, we generate 90 times the amount of initial decorations and we give all those decorations their own random color. Um, oh yeah, that was one we didn't show. So I just quit building the game. So with all these new decorations in the world to kind of make the world feel a bit more dense and more vibrant, um, these decorations might get in your way. So we basically have this kind of safety zone in the middle where you can, decorations can't be generated. But say you want to build something over here, but there's loads of structures, there are loads of rocks here. Well, if you go ahead and place a building on top of it, we dynamically hide and show the decorations. Now, if you build on top of these decorations like this, we'll delete those decorations from the world because we don't need to see them anymore, and we'll add stone to your stockpile. So we added it, I think it's five stone per decoration. So every decoration you remove, you'll get a little bit of stone back. So it's kind of a cool way of just like generating a little bit of stone. Um, and the decorations are there just kind of help out. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of a cool thing we have. Um, starting up and dome changes. Uh, edge rocks, update the main menu scene. Fixes. Oh yeah, so we had a few bug fixes. In certain games that you loaded, you were able to build on top of the starting living dome. You can't do that. You can't do it in a new, new game now. You can't click through your eyes anymore. You used to be able to click through your eyes to click this building again. You can't do that anymore. Um, we fixed a lot of collision boxes because they were wrong. <laughs> so like the Zeno Miner had a collision box that was under the world so you can never click the building. 
um, buildings that required zero workers were not able to be reactivated if they ever got deactivated. So I believe a living zone, if they ever got deactivated, you wouldn't be able to reactivate it again. That's been fixed. Uh, the rocket introduction animation, so that's when the rocket lands. Uh, that now, that now should work all the time. There was a bug where it occasionally didn't work, but we fixed that. Uh, we had a few bugs with blackouts, but they've been fixed. And building a road should play audio now when you place it. Like it does. That, for some reason, wasn't a thing. Um, but yeah. So, let's just call this bugs. And just hit enter. And save and exit. And we'll see that our new file is here. So yeah, that is colonized. Lots of stuff added to the game. Um, you know, it feels much more like a game now, in my opinion. You know, there's much more to do. There's much more resource management. Um, the next build is. I'm trying to think what the next build is due to be. Um, I haven't actually thought about it too much yet. The next build is due to be Eureka. Oh yeah, so that's we're going to work on research features so you can research new structures uh research ways to generate more resources new material types maybe technologies so you can improve your colony um so generally that's, i think that might be a fairly content heavy patch um and we'll try and get some of the things that we had to push back with this build so there was a few things we went we pushed back from build three to build four um some particle effects uh, we didn't get a chance to do the full model pass we'll try and complete so not all the new not all the buildings in the game have received the model pass we can see here actually like some of the newer structures here and here but this one and this one the old ones so we're trying to just get models so they're all our own and we don't have to worry about other things uh, but we're about halfway through doing that right now and then there's the tradable, exportable materials. We're going to try and get that into build four if we can as well. Uh, but we're just not sure how to implement it yet, which is why we kind of, we just pushed it back a bit because it was just like, this could take us a day or so just to kind of implement properly uh, in a way that we're happy. So yeah, that's build three materialism. Um, really happy with how it's looking. It's all kind of come together really well. Um, as I said, it feels much more like a game. Um, you know, there's definitely a bit more resource management there. Um, and I think with Build 4 as well, we're going to try and implement some sort of balance pass and just get the, the structures feeling a bit more real and um, get them generating like more exact amounts rather than just kind of randomly picked ones that kind of feel right at the time. Yeah. But that'll, avoid, that, that'll involve a lot of playtesting. So yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you give Colonize Build 3 materialism a go, feel free to let us know how, what you think of it. If you find any bugs, any feedback, any criticism, any discussion on the game, you know, feel free to let us know. We are always available to chat. You can get a hold of us on our Twitter accounts and our Discord channel, which are available via these buttons. Um, if you're on the itch.io page, you can also start discussions there with us. Uh, we'll be happy to respond to comments, etc., where we can. Um, and that's it. So thank you for your time. Thank you for checking out Colonized Build 3 Materialism. And uh, hopefully you have some fun with it. We'll catch you next time.